Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Master English. This is Podcast 32, our weekly podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and listening to this podcast podcast. Remember, you can get the script of the news and uh, the questions are written out if you sign up for my newsletter and I'll give you information about that at the end. So today we've got a news story, a very interesting and amazing fact, five questions from you. We've got a full show, everybody. So enough chit-chat. Let's begin. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively. During a powerful performance of Handel's Messiah, the director of the choir encouraged audience members to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. Cue Stanford scientist Dr. Glowacki. Evidently, he thought the area in front of the stage was a mosh pit and decided to attempt crowd surfing. Alas, no surfing, but... He did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. Oh no, today is long and difficult. Oh, be strong, everybody. Be strong. (laughs) Let me read it slower. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively. During a powerful performance of Handel's Messiah, the director of the choir encouraged audience members to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. Q. Stanford scientist Dr. Glowacki. Evidently, he thought the area in front of the stage was a mosh pit and decided to attempt crowd surfing. Alas, no surfing. But he did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. Oh boy, this was a difficult one. Probably the most difficult of all Let's Master English, so I promise next week I'll make it easy. Well, let's go ahead and look at the first sentence. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively. Okay, so let's get rid of the end. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away. Okay, so American man, no problem. Uh, Where was he at a concert? A musical concert. What kind of a concert? A classical music concert. So when we say classical music, music, we should be thinking of Beethoven, Mozart, and in this case, Handel. We'll talk about him in a minute. So, an American man at a British classical music concert. So, this concert was in the UK. All right. And uh, what happened to the man? He got carried away. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away. Now, carried away can actually have two meanings. Carried away, C-A-R-R-I-E-D, away. It's a phrasal verb. So, one meaning is this, to carry 
something away. And that means to pick something up and move it or take it to another place. So when you are at a restaurant, after you are finished eating, the waiter will carry your dishes away. Okay? So let's go back to the sentence. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away. Do you think somebody picked the American man up and moved him to another place? No, that that doesn't really make much sense. But there's another meaning of carried away. To be carried away. And to be carried away means to be overexcited, to be overwhelmed. Whoa! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Aha! Now that makes sense. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away. Now I can imagine this American guy, he's at the concert, and he's probably singing with the choir. Hallelujah! Ah, yes. But there's a couple more words here. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away. Long dash. Literally and figuratively. So, literally, L-I-T-E-R-A-L-L-Y. Usually in America, we say literally, literally. It's a flap T. Literally, what does literally mean? Literally means to understand or interpret something exactly or precisely, word for word. So, if I say, I'm dead, Literally, that means I'm dead. I'm not breathing, so therefore I cannot speak. If I said, I'm over the moon. Literally, that means I am above the moon, which is impossible. Now, figuratively, F-I-G-U-R-A-T-I-V-E-L-Y, Figuratively is the opposite. It means to understand or interpret something as a metaphor or as a symbol. So if I say, I'm dead, not literally, but figuratively. I'm dead means I'm very tired. It could have other meanings too. But for now, I'm very tired. So we know... I'm dead, we should not understand that sentence literally. We should understand the sentence figuratively. Now, if I said, I'm over the moon, literally, that's impossible. But figuratively, I'm over the moon means I'm very, very happy. I'm extremely happy. Do you understand? Okay, so literally, the words are understood exactly as they're said. Figuratively, it's a metaphor or a symbol. Okay? So now let's go back to our sentence. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively. So the literal meaning of carried away means somebody picked him up and moved him. And figuratively, carried away means he was overexcited. (laughs) So now this sentence is really funny. Because this American guy, he did get carried away, overexcited. Hallelujah! But he also got carried away. Somebody picked him up and moved him because he was too excited. Do you understand? Okay, so let's find out about this story. During 
a powerful performance of Handel's Messiah. Okay, so Handel is a German composer, but he moved to England in his 20s and he became an English composer, basically. And he composed Messiah, which is a very famous and very long uh, musical composition for singers, for... Anyway, it's a big, big song. And you know the song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the song. So, so there was a performance of Handel's Messiah. So during the performance, the director of the choir... Choir, C-H-O-I-R. A choir is a group of people singing together. When I was in high school, I was in a choir. I liked being in a choir. So anyway, the director of the choir encouraged the audience members to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. So as they're singing, Hallelujah, the director looked at the audience and said, Come, come to the front of the stage. Enjoy the song. Enjoy the passion. Sing with us. So the director actually told people to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. Release their emotions, set their emotions free. Woohoo! Yay! Yay! Applaud and sing. Do you understand? Okay. So as soon as the director did that, Q Stanford scientist, Dr. Glowacki. Q, C U E. Q. Now, Q means enter, or let us introduce, or let's meet. Here we see Stanford, very famous university in America, scientist, Dr. Glowacki. So when the director said, come to the front of the stage, Dr. Glowacki stood up and went to the front of the stage. Now, in America, we have rock concerts, rock and roll music, and the front of the stage in a rock concert has a special name, and it's called a mosh pit. M-O-S-H pit, P-I-T. So it's, it's called a mosh pit. And in the mosh pit, people dance really crazy. It's even violent. And one of the popular things to do is for the singer as he's singing he jumps into the people in the mosh pit and they catch him and they move him around over their heads with their hands and this is called crowd surfing and that's very popular in america so, Dr. Glowacki, who is from America, when he went to the front of the stage, we have our next sentence. Evidently, he thought the area in front of the stage was a mosh pit and decided to attempt crowd surfing. Oh, my God. <laughs> So at a rock and roll concert where it's crazy, yes, crowd surfing is okay. But for a classical music concert, can you imagine anybody crowd surfing? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, woo. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, my goodness. Well, the next sentence. Alas, no surfing. Alas, A-L-A-S. This is an old English word. Alas means in the end, or it could also mean, however, no surfing. There was no surfing. Nobody helped Dr. Glowacki crowd surf. Alas, no surfing. But 
he did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. So there was no surfing, but he did get booted out. And to be booted out, B-O-O-T-E-D, booted out, means to be kicked out, to be forced to leave. Yes, he got booted out of the concert hall. Why? For his wacky behavior. W-A-C-K-Y. Wacky, crazy, insane, strange, bizarre behavior. And this word is very similar to his name. His name is Glow Wacky, and his behavior was wacky. So who booted him out? He did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. Two people in the audience saw this crazy American doctor and they kicked him out of the concert. Oh my goodness, what a crazy story. Uh, Yeah, once again, classical music. Can you imagine anybody at a classical music crowd surfing? That's insane. If you don't know crowd surfing, just go to Google or YouTube and search for an image or a video of crowd surfing and you will see what I mean. It's not for a classical music concert. It's crazy. Okay, so we had lots of vocabulary words. Let's go ahead and take a look. To carry something away. To pick something up and move it to another place. The waiter carried the dishes away. To be carried away. To be overexcited. To be overwhelmed with excitement or joy or even anger. Literally. L-I-T-E-R-A-L-L-Y. To understand or interpret something exactly Word for word, I'm dead, means I'm not breathing, I'm dead, I'm gone. Figuratively, to understand or interpret something as a metaphor or a symbol, it's like the opposite of literally. So, I'm dead means I'm tired. It could have other meanings too. But it's not a literal translation. Okay? Handel's Messiah. Handel, H-A-N-D-E-L. Now, some people want to say Andel or Hondel, but actually the American pronunciation is Handel. Messiah, M-E-S-S-I-A-H. That is the name of uh, this musical composition. Hallelujah! is the most famous section. Choir, C-H-O-I-R. A choir is a group of people singing together. To let out, to let something out, to release, to set free. (gasps) I will let out my breath. (sighs) I released my breath. Q, -Q C-U-E. Enter. Let us introduce. Let's meet. A mosh pit. M-O-S-H. And the next word, pit. P-I-T. An area in front of the stage at a rock concert where people dance violently. Crowd surfing. Being lifted up by a crowd of people and passed over the crowd usually done at rock concerts. Alas, A-L-A-S, in the end. However, booted out, B-O-O-T-E-D, out, to be kicked out, to be forced to leave. Wacky, W-A-C-K-Y, crazy, strange, 
bizarre. Those are the words. I hope you understand the story, and I hope you understand that it's crazy. It's very funny. It's, uh, yeah, very American and very British, that's for sure. So I'm going to read it two more times. The first time, nice and slow. The second time, normal speed. And remember, if you get the newsletter, you will have the script. And I want you to read with me, especially when I do it slowly. Master the perfect pronunciation. And then when I do it quickly, listen carefully as to how I pronounce the words. Okay? All right, here we go. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively, during a powerful performance of Handel's Messiah, the director of the choir encouraged audience members to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. Q. Stanford scientist, Dr. Glowacki. Evidently, he thought the area in front of the stage was a mosh pit and decided to attempt crowd surfing. Alas, no surfing. But he did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. An American man at a British classical music concert got carried away, literally and figuratively. During a powerful performance of Handel's Messiah, the director of the choir encouraged audience members to come to the front of the stage and let their emotions out. Q. Stanford scientist Dr. Glowacki. Evidently, he thought the area in front of the stage was a mosh pit and decided to attempt crowd surfing. Alas, no surfing. But he did get booted out of the concert hall for his wacky behavior by two audience members. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Handel wrote Messiah in about three weeks. It's a three-hour performance piece with about 250,000 musical notes. At 10 hours a day, that's about 20 notes a minute. Not copying, but creating. The guy was a genius. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Wow, very interesting. So, Handel's Messiah is a three hour performance. Sometimes it's quicker, but three hours is typical. A three hour performance. That's, that's this entire musical piece. And for three hours of music, Handel wrote 250,000 musical notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Those are notes. So he had to write the music. So 250,000 musical notes for a three-hour performance. And he wrote all of this in three weeks. Just over three weeks. That's amazing. So, even if he was working 10 hours a day, that would require him to write 20 notes a minute. And and this is creating stuff. Wow, that really is amazing. The guy is a musical genius. Handel's Messiah. Yeah. Now, it is based on Christianity, so I know uh, people out there who are not Christians, people out there who do not believe in music might not know of this song, or maybe they don't like the song. 
Uh, however, the genius in the composition is undeniable. So uh, if you have a safe, quiet, private place to listen to the Messiah, uh, not the Messiah, to listen to Messiah, um, I do uh, recommend it. It's a very nice, very beautiful, very, very moving piece of music. And everything is in English, but <laughs> to be honest, it's kind of difficult to hear and understand the English. So don't worry about the words, just enjoy the music. And there's a link in our newsletter that uh, goes to NPR, National Public Radio, and you can hear a little bit of the song, the famous sections, and uh, once again, I think most of you will recognize it. Okay, it's time for some questions and answers. And our first question comes from Joseph, and he says, Hi Shane, could you please explain the word apparently in the next podcast? Thank you. You bet. So apparently, A-P-P-A-R-E-N-T-L-Y. Apparently is an adverb. And what it means is, as far as I know. Apparently, my mother loves me. <laughs> as far as I know, my mother loves me. It seems that my mother loves me. Yeah. Evidently, my mother loves me. I'm not completely sure. I'm not 100% positive, but apparently, my mother loves me. Does that make any sense? I gave you lots of synonyms, Joseph. Instead of apparently, you could say seemingly, evidently. It would seem, it would seem that, it appears that, as far as I know, they all mean the same thing. Okay, Joseph? I hope that helps. Now, our next question comes from Mohammed Riza Madadi. Hello, dear English coach Shane. How's it going? I miss you. I have a question. I have a lot of cousins. C-O-U-S-I-N-S. -S. So, how can I explain which one I'm talking about? I have so many cousins. So, for example, I have my cousin John, my cousin Jim, my cousin Dan, my cousin Tom, my cousin Joe... How do I tell people which cousin I'm talking about? My cousin is going to meet me today. Oh, great. Now, if you said, Muhammad, my cousin is going to meet me today, we have no idea which cousin. So in America, in this case, you have to use the person's name. My cousin Jim is going to meet me today. My cousin John is going to meet me today. My cousin Joe, my cousin Tom, my cousin Dan is going to meet me today. So, Muhammad, if you have a lot of cousins, but you want to talk about one of them specifically, then you should use their name. And the same with uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters. So, let's say you have three brothers and they're all older than you. So you got your big brother, your big, big brother, and your big, 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 big brother. <laughs> now, in America, we usually do not say elder brother, E-L-D-E-R. That's very old English. So I don't recommend elder brother. Just say big brother. But once again, if you have three big brothers, you have to say my big brother John, my big brother Jim, my big brother Dan, or your younger brother. But instead of younger, we can say little. My little brother Jim, my little brother Dan, my little brother Tom. Okay? I hope that helps, Muhammad. Now, our next question, this is a tough one. It comes from Vivian. Is it Reis? Reis? I hope my pronunciation is okay. Vivian says, Hi, Coach Shane. How are you doing? I love your videos and the way you explain things. Congratulations. Can you make a video about how to correct our own mistakes? For example, 
I have a friend who knows all the English grammar rules. Past tense, present tense, future tense, present perfect. But when she speaks, she makes mistakes. And and she knows. She tells me, Vivian, I just made a mistake. And then she corrects her mistakes. So she knows how to use English. She understands the grammar. But she makes mistakes anyway. And she's worried. So what can she do? That's a great question. Um, yeah. Knowing the grammar rules is important. Uh, hopefully, most students study English grammar in middle school or high school. Um, I think that's common in many countries. Um, but the only way to become a master of the grammar, especially spoken English, is to speak. You have to speak. Now, there are two types of speaking. There is repeating. Repeating what you hear. So that's what we do in my DDM class. We study a script, we listen to people speak, and then we repeat. By repeating, constantly repeating these grammar structures, they become natural. But it takes a lot of time. You can also, if you're reading a book or reading a magazine, read it out loud. Not in your head, out loud. Repeat. Read those sentences. The more you read that structure, the more natural it becomes. So that's one excellent way of speaking. And of course, the other way is to speak with a native English speaker. Now the problem is most native English speakers will not correct you when you make a mistake. So to be honest... Repeating a script from a television show, repeating or reading out loud something in a magazine or a newspaper is actually probably more beneficial. And of course, if you have a private English teacher or an English coach like me, that's going to help too. Uh, so Vivian, my recommendation, because your friend is knowledgeable of grammar and the structure, repeat. Repeat, 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 and do it out loud, okay? I hope that helps. Now, my next question comes from, ah, how do I pronounce this? Uh, I'm sorry, M-A-G-A-L-Y. Magali, is it Magali, R-O-J-A-S, Royas, Rojas? Oh, I'm so sorry. Hello, I'm from Venezuela. Ah, Venezuela. I would like to participate in your live class. I follow your podcasts on YouTube. I really enjoy them. They're really good. Well, Magali, um, I would love to have you in our live classes. And it's part of DDM. So DDM is a class that I teach online. And DDM actually has three levels. DDM Open with no live classes. It's for busy people. DDM Live with two live classes every month. And actually there's four, but it's every two weeks there are two live classes. And there's DDM VIP. And DDM VIP has four VIP classes and the extra two live classes. So VIP students actually get six classes. Live students get two. Um, and I'm sorry, Magali, but they're not free. You do have to pay. But uh, the students who join, the students who participate, they have a great time. And it's so important to have an opportunity to speak with a native English speaker. And what we do in the live classes is I listen to everybody's questions, I help people with their pronunciation, and we also do role play. So I have people read things, things that we have studied, and I listen to them. I work on their pronunciation and their intonation. 
So DDM, we welcome anyone from any country, any age range. Um, you're welcome to join. It's not free, but uh, it's an investment. It's an investment in your education. And, uh, you know, sometimes when things are free, we don't use them very well. But when you're paying for something, you use it usually much better, unless you're really rich. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Magali, I would love to have you join DDM. Anybody, if anybody is interested, you have to understand DDM is not, you know, a simple class. DDM takes 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes a day, six days a week. Okay? Um, and it's, it's, there's a structure. On day one, you get an assignment. You do some dictation. Uh, the next day, I give you the answers. I give you a video explaining pronunciation, cancellation, linking. And then the next day, I give you an explanation about what you studied. And sometimes we add in uh, cultural lessons too. And you get two lessons a week, four less, I'm sorry, eight lessons a month. So if you're interested in DDM, I'll give you the first month for free. DDM 1 through DDM 8. You can have it for free. See if you like it. There's no live hangouts for this. Um, it's just self-study. It's like DDM Open. So if you're interested, please go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash try DDM. Okay? All right, great. Uh, for people who want to sign up for DDM Live, it's really easy. We have a website. You can go there and, and sign up now if you want. Um, it's dailydictation.blogspot.com. So that's D-A-I-L-Y-D-I-C-T-A-T-I-O-N, dailydictation.blogspot, B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T. Dot com. And for DDM Open, um, it's ddmopen.blogspot.com. So you can go there, sign up today, and uh, we'll start you right away. If, you're, uh, if you want to do that DDM VIP, uh, you need to send me an email because we're almost completely full for DDM VIP. Um, but if you're interested, send me an email. My email address is dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Okay, we have one more question. This is from, and I hope my pronunciation is okay, Duy Tran, Duy Tran from Vietnam. Um, he says, English is not only an interesting subject, but also a useful one. Is it a useful one or an useful one. Oh, that's a great question. So useful, U-S-E-F-U-L. Now, a useful language or useful begins with a vowel. Shouldn't it be an useful language? Good question. The answer is a. Uh. It is a useful language, a useful one. Why is it a? Uh? Useful begins with a vowel. Yes, it does. However, useful, the sound is not a vowel sound. It's actually a consonant sound, the Y. And in front of a Y, like yellow, we say a yellow bird. We don't say an yellow bird. What about a university? Is it a university or an university? It is a University, because university starts with a Y sound. So it's not necessarily the vowel, it's the sound that you have to remember. Okay? So English is not only an interesting subject, but also a useful subject, a useful one. Thank you so much for those questions, everybody.
All right, and it is time to wrap up our podcast. Let's Master English 32. Thank you so much, everybody, for downloading the podcast. Now, remember, if you have an Android phone, Max is your hero because he made a free app. So you can download and listen to any of the Let's Master English podcasts. Just go to Google Play and search for Let's Master English Podcast. And then you will see there are many English podcasts, but you'll see a red microphone. And that's the one you need to install. And it will let you listen to all of our podcasts. Thank you so much, Max. Max, you are awesome. And everybody, I want you to know, I do have a daily podcast every day. It's called Daily Easy English Expression. And you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher is, a, is like a, a podcast radio player. It's excellent. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R, Stitcher. And let me make sure here. Stitcher.com. I'm going to type. So we're, we're podcasting and researching at the same time. Stitcher.com. Yep. Um, and then I guess you have to download the app. And they have, it's a free app for Apple and Android. And then you just uh, find your show. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I don't have a, I have a smartphone but I I never use it. Believe it or not. <laughs> so, um yeah, please get it. Uh listen to the podcast, both the podcasts on Stitcher and uh and enjoy. And uh yeah. Thank you so much you guys. Um once again, you can find me on Twitter at Coach Shane. You can find me on Facebook ESL Coach Shane. That's everybody. It's C O A C H. Coach, not couch. Shane, S H A N E. And we also have a Google Plus community. And that is called Let's Master English. And our community is fantastic. I want you to join. And if you can, help Azim and the many other students who dictate all of these podcasts. You guys are excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. Have a fantastic week. Remember, no crowd surfing at classical music concerts, okay? Just stay in your seats. Be quiet. Enjoy the music. You guys have a great week. Let's master English! English!